Welcome everybody. This video is to uh, cover um, a beginner's guide to cruising the San Juan Islands. This is for those of you that have not been to the San Juan Islands before and cruised on your boat or are new to boating in the area, uh, whether you're chartering or whether you own your own boat. What we're going to cover today is an overview of San Juan Islands. We're going to cover some good guides and charts uh, to have and chart tools. Um, we're going to talk about currents, cautions, and obstructions. And then we're going to get into where to go. So let's get started. So I like to use uh, an online tool called Active Captain for my planning when I plan a trip into the San Juan Islands. And in case you didn't know, San Juan Islands are right here in this corner of Washington State. And it's very popular for cruising grounds. So we're going to go in here and look at this. So this can, is pretty much consists of the San Juan Islands. Um, there are several big islands. Um, there are four that are accessible from by ferry from over here in Anacortes, right here, which is Orcas, Shaw, San Juan, and Lopez. Um, there's mm, lots of places to cruise out here in the San Juans, and we'll get into that in detail after we cover some of the other topics. So uh, it comprises of San Juan Islands comprise of islands in two counties. One is San Juan Islands, or San Juan County, which is out here. And the other one is these islands here that are part of Skagit County. Uh, Lummi Island isn't necessarily considered part of the San Juan Islands, which is near Bellingham. Um, there isn't much cruising going on up here. It's more residential and that sort of thing. Um, there are basically three major towns that people step off from to go to the San Juans. One is up here in Bellingham. They cruise out this way. The other is Anacortes, which is right here. Or here, there's two main areas. This out here is called Skyline. This is the city of Anacortes right here, and there's several marinas here. And then down here on the Swinomish Channel is La Connor. And a lot of people may come up from Seattle and take this inside path overnight in La Connor and then head out. And, most of the time they'll head out to Deception Pass, which can be problematic due to the currents. So timing is, a, is an issue, and we'll go over that later. Okay, so here's the San Juans again. Um, let's talk about guides and charts. So I recommend that you get a chart like this charts, waterproof, Bold out, shows the San Juan Islands. Um, this is a good one. Why do you need charts when everybody's got a chart plotter? Uh, charts are very good to give you situational awareness. Because, for example, your chart plotter might be zoomed into here because of where you're going to go. Well, you can't keep track of what, what's out here and where you're going. Okay, So charts are good for that, to show you what's coming up. I always keep my charts out. I am always looking at them, even though I'm running off a chart blotter. Uh, another guide is this classic book called San Juan's Islands of Footer Float. I don't think this is a publication anymore, but you can get it used at many bookstores. But this is a good uh, basic, shows you all the different places to go. Um, another good guide is is um, Salish Steep Pilots. They they produce they produce a uh, PDF format guide that you can download and you can print off sections as you need them. And they have several different guides for all of the cruising areas around here. Um, an individual guide is fourteen dollars, and they've got one for San Juan and another one for Puget Sound and the Gulf Islands. And you can see what all these are. Okay. Here's an example of what their guide looks like. Here's, I, I set this to the page for Susha Island, which we'll go over later. 
but it's got all kinds of information. It talks about all the different bays you can you can uh, anchor in. It gives a nice description. So that's a good guide. Okay. All right. Let's go back to our. So let's talk about currents and cautions on obstructions. You need to have a good uh, a new a good current guide. Currents are the main issue with cruising in San Juans because there are currents everywhere with two tidal changes a, a day and approximately 10 foot of tide rise and fall. That generates quite a bit of current. I recommend you buy this current atlas that's published by the uh, government of Canada where they've done um, quite a bit of research on the currents around here. And this, this is a one-time purchase, but then every year you would purchase the uh, Wagner tables for that goes with the guide. And what this does is this tells you for any given day and hour which page within the within the guide you would look at for what the current's blowing at. And it's pretty good. Now, if you're going to play on online currents, I use this application called DeepZoom. And I'll put the link of all these things in the description. But this is very good because it shows you a graphical representation of what the currents are doing. Let's let's look at tomorrow, for example. At 9 a.m., here's what the currents are doing. And the size of the arrow shows you the size, the strongness of the current. And currents are important because a 1.5 um, knot current could be equivalent of basically three knots difference. So you calculate time to get somewhere and you're adding three knots to it as opposed to running with the current versus running against the current. And you can see how that would add some time. Um, here's an example of 9 a.m., 9.44 a.m. tomorrow. You can adjust the slider to see what it's doing. And you can see that leaving Anacortish, you're going to go, you're going to leave with a current behind you at 1.7 knots. And then if you get over here, you're going to get a, a, a current that you have to uh, head into. So you can plan accordingly. This is a good example where if you were going north, you probably wouldn't want to go out here and up this way or out here and up this way. You probably want to go out here and around Wemus Island and head up this way. Okay. So keep in mind currents, okay? The other thing that's interesting about currents is usually out here in Spiden, going out to Roche Harbor, it's usually flowing in the opposite direction of the current that you're going in. So for example, if you're coming up here, you got a current against you. Once you get out here around this point, you've got a current with you. I, I Back when I had a sailboat and we were going to Roche Harbor, we got out here and there was a three knot current against us. We had like a two knot current behind us all the way up. Round to this point, we had a three knot current behind us and our sailboat only went five knots motoring. So we had we were basically chunking along here to two knots against this current. So keep that in mind. Now let's talk about Deception Pass. Deception Pass down here is, uh, a narrow channel with a bridge over it that separates, uh, the bridge separates Woodby Island and Fidalgo Island, which is where Anacortes is. And this current can run very strong, upwards of eight knots. So you always want to go out here at uh, slack tide and hopefully with a slight current behind you. There's some other places where the currents are a little strong. And you can see that here. And we can move this slider so you can see how it builds and then how it retreats. Like here at 440, there's a, a flow of current at 5.7. Okay. So that's currents. Keep keep track of keep track of your currents. Um what else are we going to go? Let's go back to Okay, so let's talk about cautions. Cautions are, I'm gonna go back over here to Captain. 
Number one is there's sea lanes through here. Okay, you can see these purpley, pinkish lines. Those are the sea lanes going up here. They're down here. Um, you're going to have sea lanes either Rosario Strait, or you're going to have sea lanes up over here around on Harrow Strait, which goes up around San Juan Islands. The biggest thing you have to keep in mind during for these um, sea lanes is this is commercial traffic. Coast Guard regulations say as, as a recreational boater, you need to be crossing these sea lanes as close to 90 degrees as possible. So keep that in mind. You always want to cross them. You don't want to be, you don't want to be going over here and going with them. Um, the other thing is, is don't try ever try to, to uh, pass in front of any vessel that's a commercial vessel in these sea lanes. Number one, they'll honk at you. They'll tell you not to try it. But uh, the other thing is, is they're much bigger than they appear, and there's no way you can actually get in front of them and get across. The other thing you have to keep in mind out here is there are tugboats pulling barges and you never ever want to go between a tugboat and its barge. Okay. Um, the other cautions we have out here are when the current and the wind oppose one another, which can happen right down in here. When we get the westerlies coming in from the Straits of Juan de Fuca, which is this water here, and they hit um, a, an ebbing current, what happens is, is you get a, a, a tall standing wave, quick duration standing wave, and it can be quite unpleasant, especially if you're not going into it or even following it, it can be kind of treacherous. And that happens here, and it happens in here, and it happens up here at the north end of Orcas Island right here. That can happen, especially when uh, you've got a flooding current and you've got a northerly wind blowing down. Um, I experienced that one time and my sailboat came around here and we were in basically three foot seas until we got far enough over that these islands up here were blocking, blocking that um, the wind. And then once, you, once we got out here, the current wasn't as strong. So keep that in mind. Anywhere where you would have uh, a, a stronger wind, you know, five, five miles an hour and a current over about two opposing, you can have that problem. Okay. Uh, the other thing is seaplanes. There are seaplanes operating in this area. This is particularly important if you're uh, coming into port like Friday Harbor. Okay, this is Friday Harbor right here. And if you're coming in here, the seaplanes come right down through here to land. So keep an eye out, keep your head on a swivel as you're coming in to places like this for seaplanes coming in. Another place that you got to keep in mind is over here in, in uh, Fisherman Bay on Lopez. There's a seaplane zone that you don't want to be anchoring in that's right out here. So keep that in mind. And the same thing happens out here in Roche Harbor. There's a lot of seaplane activity that comes in here and there's a seaplane dock. So where you're anchoring, if you're anchoring out here, keep that in mind that you need to keep room for the seaplanes. Okay, let's talk about obstructions in the islands. Now, people will tell you, oh, I hit a rock, an uncharted rock. There are no uncharted rocks or shoals in the San Juan Islands. They are charted. The problem is, is people don't watch their, don't look at their charts in detail to notice these things. Here's an example. There's this reef up here. And people hit this all the time because they're not paying attention. Um, so mind your charts. Uh, let's see. The other thing is, is, is you don't want to be going straight lines in certain places. For example, if you were over here going through Pole Pass to head out towards, this is Pole Pass, by the way, and it's not bad to go through. But what a lot of people will do is they'll come out through here and they'll take a straight line out because they want to go out to San Juan Island. 
and they'll run up on these rocks here. You need to make sure you go stay in the channel, go north, and then turn and go west. That's one place. Another place is uh, up here at Jones and Stewart Island. There's a lot of people will come through Jones Pass and they'll come straight down over here to Roche Harbor and they'll cut across these rocks and run aground as opposed to coming, keep coming down and then turn south. Another area that's of concern is through Mosquito Pass, which is right here. And some, some charter companies do not allow first time voters to go through Mosquito Pass. I don't know why, I've never had a problem. You just gotta follow follow the, the buoy markers going through here, okay? Make sure you stay in the channel. Make sure you don't try to cut this corner where there's a shoal if you're going in, into a Garrison Bay. Okay, that sort of thing. And then, of course, the last one is Fisherman Bay. Fisherman Bay is right here. And again, you have to follow the, the markers, otherwise you'll run up on the mud. And there is a, a rock right out here. There's a, a rock right out here at the entrance that you have to be aware of. Okay. Uh, one more example is up here in Blind Bay. You can see right here, there's a rock and a shoal. There's a beacon on it, but you have to be careful. Okay. Here's another example of shoals you have to be careful of. Let me go back over here towards Anacortes. Out here is Sandbag Island. And you can see that it shallows on the east side of Sandbag and it shallows on the east side of Hat Island. So you never want to go out here with anything other than a basically a dinghy because it shallows up quickly. So you never go on the east side of these islands. Okay. Uh, we kind of talked about Pole Pass, Mosquito Pass, and those. So let's go to back here. Let's talk about places you want to go. There are several towns and resorts in the islands. We have state park islands, and we have quiet bays, and a whole variety of different things for different people based on what they want to do. So if we go back here, I already talked about Anacortes. Some people come up, cruise up from Seattle, and they they stay a couple of days in, in Anacortes. It's a nice marina. It's where I have my boat. Um, some people charter out of Bellingham. That's very popular to charter up here out of Bellingham. And also, like I said, in O'Connor, some people will come in, come up here, and they'll want to go to Anacortes, and they'll spend a night or so in O'Connor, which is quite a nice little town. Um, on the islands themselves, there's Friday Harbor, which is the largest town out in the San Juans, and it's got the public uh, marina here. One thing nice about um, Friday Harbor and its marina is that they pride themselves on always having room for everybody. I've gone into Friday Harbor with uh, no reservations on the 4th of July weekend, and they'll have you uh, tie up to the, to, um, the breakwater here. And you're required to raft up to three deep. And um, I spent approximately three hours there before they found me a slip. And that was on a Friday of a uh, Fourth of July weekend. Now, contrary to that, we have out here, which is Roche Harbor, which is a very historic resort right here. For 4th of July, you need to get reservations here on the first day of January each year because these guys book up and they book up fast. So if you're thinking of coming out here on a holiday, yeah, probably not going to probably not going to uh, be able to get a slip. But you can always anchor um, or you can anchor down south here in uh, in Garrison, which is very quiet anchorage. And you can if you've got a fast dinghy, you can run up to Roche Harbor to. Go to the restaurants or the store or anything else. Roche Harbor is really nice because in the summertime, every night they have a, a flag ceremony where they take down the flags and shoot off a cannon, and it's very nice. Um, over here on Orcas, 
up here in west our uh, excuse me east sound here it is east sound is rosario resort which is an old um mansion from a wit rich uh lumberman um from years gone by and it's been turned into a a uh, resort and it's got a nice marina fairly new fairly newly reconstructed marina about five years old and again you're going to want to call for reservations for places like that and then the other place to go would be down here which i showed earlier in uh fisherman bay and they have they have two marinas in here that you could stay at um i think this is the lopez islander is this one and I can't remember what that one is, but you guys can go out to uh, Active Captain and go in here and look to see what these are. So, oh, Island Marine Center is what that one is. Okay. Um, but this is a nice spot. They do a big Fourth of July here. There's always everybody's always anchored out in here. Um, lots of boats anchor, so you don't have to necessarily pay for a marina. Um. But again, watch your travels through here. And uh, it's not advisable at low, low tide. So you want to watch your tides. Um, so those are the big resorts. Um, there's another little resort up here on Blakely called the Blakely Marina. It's a nice little spot, except there's really nothing to do there. And you can't really leave the premise as much because it's private property all around here but if you need a place to spend the night before heading back to Anacortes this is a good spot and you want a marina okay so let's talk about state parks so um state parks here's an example of uh all the state park islands up here in uh in the San Juan Islands. And a lot of these have moorages. And a lot of these, um, when I say moorages, they either have a dock or dock and uh, mooring balls or just mooring balls, or you can anchor there because they have uh, good anchorage. Um, if you're gonna spend any time up there at all, uh, you can get an annual moorage pass for the uh, state parks. And you got to do the math to see if it makes sense for you and the number of visits you're gonna make. But um, overnight costs regularly without the pass, 70 cents per foot for vessel length at the docks or $15 for a mooring ball. So you can do the math to see whether it makes sense. Um, so let's go over some of the, some of the state park islands. And um, if this is the first time you ever come to the San Juans, I highly recommend that you do not leave Susha Island off your list because this is actually the jewel of the San Juan Islands. This whole, pretty much this whole island, other than this finger island here, is a state park and it has multiple bays you can stay in. Over here in Fish in uh, Fossil Bay, it has two docks that you can try to get onto in midweek is probably best. Um, other than that, there's Echo Bay that always has lots of room and there is um, all these other bays where you see these anchorages. And I'm not going to go into a whole lot of detail about this island or any of these islands because you can do your own research. Another state park island is out here called Petos, and it's very limited. This is best left for off season or midweek because it only has two morning balls. But it also has a lighthouse, and um, there's actually a pretty famous book about written by a a lady who spent her childhood out here as the daughter of a lighthouse keeper that you can research. Um, this island here, Mita, also has a little cove with a couple of mooring balls in it. Pets are not allowed on this island, so keep that in mind. Um, you can't take your dog for a walk on this island. So those are three state park islands. Then we have um, over here on Lopez, there's Spencer Spit State Park. Now, a lot of charter companies will send you with an itinerary to Spencer Spit. And while it's a nice island and there's mooring balls on both sides, 
uh, the wind can blow either out of the south or the north and make it very uncomfortable to be on that side getting blown all the time. So this is a pretty low split or uh, spit and it's um, pretty exposed if the wind's blowing. So keep that in mind. Um, and yes, it's safe to go through this channel here between this island and the spit. Uh, let's see where else. James Island, which is right across here from Manacortes, is a very nice island, but it's very hard to get to. One of the things you'll find is there's a dock here, but the dock is usually always full unless it's midweek. I've only been able to come here once, and that was on the way back from another trip. Um, and we got to stay on the dock for, we were on the dock for just long enough to get off and stretch our legs. Could have stayed the night, but it was a Sunday night and we were heading home. There are mooring balls over here on this side, on the east side, but this is exposed to ferry traffic and be bumpy. <clears throat> One other option if you're coming over here is to anchor in this bay, which I have done. And this is pleasant and quiet, but don't try to cross over here to the island in a dinghy that does not have a motor because these currents will basically suck you one way or the other. They're so strong through here. Let's see, Jones Island is right here and it's a nice little island and they've got a nice quiet cove here in the north side and a dock, which is sometimes available. One of the things you'll find in the San Juans is getting on a dock on a busy weekend can be problematic for any of these state park islands. Oh, the other resort I forgot about, Deer Harbor. Of course, another resort here is Deer Harbor, which is a very nice little marina to stay at. Uh, very quiet, very friendly. Our yacht club has spent several, um, at least once a year, cruise to here and spend the weekend. So, and the, to get there, you would go through Pole Pass and don't let this pass scare you because it's it's okay. It's not bad. Just got to go through single file. Um, just outside, you might want to uh, announce your intentions on channel uh, 16 VHF and say northbound through Pole Pass or southbound through Pole Pass. Give people other things. Um, uh, one of the things I didn't cover under uh, cautions is the ferries. Okay, the ferries ply these waters primarily um, from over here in Anacortes, right? Here's the ferry dock, and they'll come out here and run over here through uh, this pass here, that's your pass. So you got to keep track, keep your head on a swivel coming across here because these ferries aren't very loud and they actually will sneak up on you. And it, when you're coming through here, you want to stay to one side or the other to get room for the ferries. It can also get congested here at the north end of Lopez because the ferries come in here and they come around and you never know whether they're going to turn in here or go continue through Henry Channel to Orcas, which is here. So this can get congested with ferries. They come through here, this, this channel here, so that can get congested with ferries. They also come down through here to Friday Harbor. So that can get congested with a ferry. So keep your head on a swivel, make sure you've got situational awareness. And you know where the ferries are coming up behind you. Okay, um, back to our state park island. Here's a little state park island here, Turn, Turn Island, which is hard to get into and the current runs crazy, but there's morning balls there. Uh, I've come over here before, right dinghy from Friday Harbor, just to see what it was about. Uh, Blind Bay is right here, which has a little island on it. This is a good spot to pick up a morning ball for lunch on your way back. Um, come in here and hook on a morning ball by Blind Island and, uh, and um, have lunch and then take off again. Blind Bay is very popular, especially down at this end, especially if it's blowing out of the south because it's quiet in here and a good anchorage. Been some quiet time. Um, there are some places, I believe, over here where there's public access to walk your dog if you need to. Let's see, what else can I tell you? 
This parks bay is pretty popular to anchor, but there's no place to go walk your dog. So if you're not a pet owner, it's a good quiet place to anchor. Uh, let me see what else. Okay, let's talk about Stewart Island. Stewart Island is another state park island. It's right here. It's got two harbors. It's got uh, Reed Harbor and Provost on the north side, Reed Harbor on the south side. Mind your rocks as you come in here. If you come in here, it's this is really nice because it's got um it's got floats out in the water and it's got dock here, which is really shallow. Only the most uh, small draft boats can anchor there. Most other boats, there's like two rafts out here and you can uh, raft up or uh, tie up to the rafts and spend the night there. Um, this side over here has a, has a bigger dock on this side. It's also got a mooring cable, which is a big old long rope strung between uh, like three or four cans and you can you can tie up to it and that's a, they're much easier than than you think they are to use yeah, so if you're inclined use those instead of a mooring ball they do have mooring balls out here one of the things you can do here the nice about the northern provost harbor is you can moor out here take your dinghy over to the county dock and then take the i think it's four miles out to turn point to the lighthouse. This is uh, orcas, killer whales are very often uh, spotted out here around this point. The other place that killer whales tend to be is out here off of the outside of um, San Juan Island and at Kiln Point, which I'm not seeing exactly where it is. There it is, Kiln Point. So that's, you could sometimes see them out here. Uh, the only one to really be cruising out here on the outside of San Juan Island is when the weather is most settled because it can get, it can get pretty rough out here. Okay. This little bay down here is pretty popular, except, and they've got mooring balls. Um, and I believe this is DNR land so that you don't have to pay the mooring balls up to three days and but this can get windy in a southwesterly so uh let's talk about what you would do um like an itinerary so if you're gonna get you're gonna leave anacortes let's say a good place to start is to come up here to cypress island okay and there's a little cove here that's got some morning balls you can spend the night there's Eagle Harbor here that has 16 mooring balls. And these are all DNR mooring balls, so they're free for up to three days. And then this little bay here is a nice little anchorage too. And now I understand there's some mooring balls in here. Um, Eagle Harbor is nice because you can go ashore and you can hike, you can hike all, all the way up to Pelican Beach, or you can climb up to Eagle Cliff, provided they don't have the trail closed because of eagles nesting. Uh, Pelican Beach has a bunch of mooring balls, but as you can see, it can be pretty exposed. So if you're leaving and all these places are full, you could keep on going across through Obstruction Pass. And this little state park here, recreation area, has some mooring balls. This is really nice um, when it's blowing out of the blowing out of the uh, north. I came up here once, it was blowing 20 knots from the uh from the north and we pulled into this bay and it was dead calm other than the current comes through here and on a mooring ball you're doing circles the whole time so um let's see what else could you do again i highly recommend you work your way out to susha island um there's nothing on waldron that you would want to do it's private it's kind of the same way with sinclair island Vendovi, if you're looking for a little day trip or place to stop on the way, this is a, a private island that has a um, day use on the dock here at the north end. You can dock and you can hike around the island on, on uh, trails. So let's see, what else can I tell you? Um, 
West Sound. There's a marina here in West Sound that um, is more private marina, but they do have transient moorage. It's not really a resort. That's kind of nice. Um, and then, of course, Garrison Bay. The other the thing I need to tell you about Garrison Bay is um, there's a state park here, English Camp. And if you want to do your history on the San Juan Islands, look up the Pig War. Um, because war almost bro broke out with between the U.S. and British because of a, somebody killing the, somebody else's pig before um, back in the days when this whole area was disputed on who uh, who had jurisdiction over these islands. So Westcott Bay, um, people more or anchor up in there. Uh, there's some shellfish operator in here. A lot of people go and buy their, their shellfish. Um, Mitchell Bay has a nice little resort in it. Um, again, this is really shallow. Be very careful coming in here in the Mitchell Bay. And um, big wide open bays. This is popular down here. This bay um, is very popular with people just anchoring, as is um, these bays over here on Lopez. Okay. Uh, there's a lot of, some people come in here and anchor, very quiet place, not much to do on land here. There is a boat ramp over here, uh, county dock, but other than that, there's really nothing to do here. So uh, let's talk about Deception Pass for a minute, because if you're looking someplace short to go, there are some nice little bays down here, Bowman Bay. It's a nice spot to moor. It's got um, a float usually over here that you can tie up to and makes it very quiet because you're tucked in here enough. Rosario Beach over here has a little dock. Uh, can get really shallow in Sharps Cove, um, but you can go in there. Uh, if you're going through Deception Pass, again, mind your currents. Um, you can come in and Cornet Bay has some moorage and floats for the state park there. Um, caution you here, this boat ramp, boats are coming in and out of here. I spent, we spent a day here and a night on the float and night time was very peaceful because there was no traffic, but with all these boats coming in and out of this boat ramp, the water was choppy all day. So keep that in mind. Uh, inside here, you keep going around, there's Hope Island, which is another state park. And, um, I believe this one is Skagit Island. There's some mooring balls here. And over here, there's some mooring balls on Hope Island. And people also like to anchor down in here. If you're coming in to La Conner, this is very, very uh, critical that you stay outside these mooring or these uh, markers, channel markers, before you make the corner. If you try to cut across here, you'll be on the mud. One of the things that you'll notice is that low tide, it's like you're traveling down a, a channel <laughs> cut through the mud because it can get really shallow here. It's almost easier to come at low tide because you can see where you're going than it is as high tide. Um, over here on this side, you've got um, some range markers to get you lined up to go in here. Um, in here, there is some shallowness right up here. You can see it on here on the west side of the channel by um, Shelter Bay. So keep that in mind. But that, that'll get you into La Conner. Um, if you guys, anybody has any comments for me, please comment in the, in the comment section below. And like I said, I'll put links to all these items um, in the description. And tell me what you like, tell me what you don't like. Tell me if you want me to go into more detail on anything. Um, and with that, I think that'll conclude.